I've been nice, I get money, I'm on my suck again. Tryna stack a little dub, tryna catch a win. And next time I drop a coupe, it's gonna be a twin turbo. Always been a G, but I ain't never been a herb though. Way I'm switching lanes, this shit call a nigga Swervo. <laughs> Honestly, what's the last time you ever seen someone do cocaine? Be like, that was a bad experience. Yeah, would not recommend. Well, yeah. me, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> many <a> times. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And that's how we started the episode. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not fat. really. <laughs> that means fat ass pussy. No, that means uh, no fat. It's a sound that you make when you masturbate. <laughs> like fat, fat, fat. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, it's so funny because that happens. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So like, it's like an internet thing where it's like, uh, no fat is like this this thing. Like a bunch of guys on Reddit uh, just yeah. started, I guess, where like they found out there were some advantages to not jerking off. Um, really? Yeah, like it's what? it's just really if you go on the just not jerking up. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Pros and cons. Just cons. <laughs> right, right. Oh, dude, no, dude. There's it's really it's actually kind of uh it's kind of pathetic. Like it's just like a bunch of guys on there. It's like retain your cum, bro. You know, like the power as a man is in your seed. Oh, you know. <laughs> You know, okay, got it. I even went on porn up yesterday and I turned it off. Yeah, <laughs> no, seriously, they'll yeah, do they, test what, what I get upset with is they'll get yeah. so it'll be like a 16 year old kid and he's like so mad at himself yeah. for jerking off. <laughs> it's like, dude, you're 16, you're you supposed to yourself. trust yeah, yeah. me. I didn't jerk off when I was 16, I'm fucked up, you know, like, <laughs> like that's you're supposed to, you're good. Like, dude, they'll go out there, people you be said like, you didn't jerk off when you were 16. No, I didn't, I didn't jerk off the first time till uh, uh, Christmas break, senior year. Wow. Yeah, because I was. What were you waiting for? I was I'm laughing because. Like, <laughs> marriage. <laughs> weirdly specific time frame where we're typically with your family in a, in a Christmas. Well, you don't setting. forget the first right. time. Dude. Right. You don't. Exactly. That's what it is. Well, because it was like. Um, it was like. Because uh, I was raised super Christian, yeah. you know? And so I was taught that, like, having. Like, I remember, like, I was, like, 10 years old and I, I told my mom, I was like, Mom, I've been having a lot of erections, mm -hmm. you know? And she's like, why? And I was like, because I'm thinking about girls. She's like, you can't Wait, do how that. How old were you in this happened? Like, like 10. 10. Yeah, yeah. Like, fifth grade. And uh, she's like, you can't do that. That's a sin. You can go to hell for that. So just, like, whenever you get hard, think about, like, baseball or something, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Fast forward full circle. That is what I'm <laughs> <laughs> Now we're trying to think yeah, about yeah, baseball yeah. so we can last longer. Yeah, yeah. Right. Mom was right. <laughs> Mom, Mom was right. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know. But uh, no, but so I, I just waited, and I thought it was, like, a sin to masturbate, yeah. you know? So, like, until... Like, around, like, uh, junior year, like, around wintertime up north, I had, like, a crisis of faith, but then I, like, kept the faith. And then senior year, I had, like, a crisis of faith again, and then I was, like... Like, my whole thing was, like, dude, if I'm not going to be a Christian, I'm going to do drugs, and I'm going to have sex. Yeah. Like, that was... If there's no God, I'm, I'm definitely... In. I'm going all in. Yeah. You know, like, I didn't even understand how, like, normal people would just be, like... Like, they didn't believe in God, but they would just, they would just smoke weed. Yeah. You know what I mean? I didn't understand why they weren't doing cocaine yeah, and yeah. heroin. Like, I didn't understand why people didn't push it to the limits, you yeah. know? So, Chris... Oh, well, you're like me. I'm going I'm to fucking get in the kitchen or get the fuck out. Right, God, right. You know, like, it, yeah. if I'm going to have a cheat meal, it's like 10,000 calories. Right, you know? yeah. You know? I'm not trying to... You know, chill. Yeah, 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 yeah. no. I don't want to just smoke yeah. weed. I want to do hard drugs. <laughs> yeah, I want to do hard drugs, you know? <laughs> like, I saw Requiem for a Dream, and I'm like, I want to do that, you know? Like... <laughs> That looks like a fun life all experience. Right. We'll get in the episode, but Let's I want to bring back this. that first time you busted it. We're keeping all that. Hey guys, welcome back to the Millennial Mentality Podcast. I am your host, Nick Agnelli, here with my co-host, Peter Price. Yep. And our guest today, Danny Fallon. Yes, Danny, thank you so much for coming on. Yeah. Um, I'm super pumped for this, guys. And Danny's going to make us laugh and cry <laughs> and just no go pressure. feel through all the emotions. Yeah. Right? Um, that's the worst thing of all time. Like, I feel like people go up to comedians and be like, say a joke. You know, oh, like, it's the worst. Um, but, uh... Guys, thank you for watching, listening, viewing, and subscribing. Uh, your support means the world to us. We only say the cost of the show is just to tell a friend or family member, a coworker, anyone you know. If you get anything, buy it, a laugh, a cry, words of wisdom, anything like that. Just just uh, please forward that off to the people you know. That's how we're trying to grow organically and be a local a business and, and try to influence more people in a positive way. So that is our one ask of you guys. Um, we're going to run through a few quick things to catch uh, you guys up, and then uh, we're going to go to Danny. So... Um, we had recently gone on a podcast called the MSCS podcast, um, and we, we are recording Tuesday and that comes out this Friday, um, where, you know, Pete and I with, with having guests on, we typically talk about the guests in their lives and their come up. And, uh, for that one, we were the guests on this podcast and we were kind of able to dive into our lives and, and how we got to the point where we are on kind of a deeper level. You know, we touch on it throughout these episodes, but it's really a full circle type thing. And, 
And uh, Tommy, thank you to you for having us on. Uh, that was really great. And uh, yeah, guys, so check that out. He's on Spotify. He's a Spotify exclusive podcast. And uh, he also uh, uploads to YouTube. So thank you for that. Yeah. Um, I also want to say, guys, that you know, if you have been following for a while, you know that I did 75 hard at the beginning this year, and it really changed my life, and it changed some of the lives of the people around me, and Pete did his version of 75 soft, um, and when I finished, uh, Pete said that he really wanted to do 75 hard, and that, um, and that he's going to be taking it on soon, and I told him that I'll do it again with him. So, yep. uh, starting July 26th, it's basically right when I get back from my wedding, uh, we're jumping on 75 hard. And for me, it's going to be a little different because I have two weddings to go to during those 75 days. I have my birthday right in the middle, so there's a shit ton of excuses and curveballs. Um, there's going to be days full of flying. I'm going to have to work out twice and drink a gallon of water and all that shit. Um, but yeah, I'm you're doing two weddings during that 75? Yeah, fucking, yeah. Um, so it's going to be a lot, but it's going to be fun. So yeah. if you guys want to join, guys, we encourage you guys to, uh, if you're in a shitty place or feel bad in life, make a change. And if you want to do that with us, we'll be here. Or even if you're in a great place in life and... Want to think push you it. can get more out of it. Correct. Yeah, I think it's for everyone. Um, so, the last thing is, guys, I did go to New Orleans this weekend for my bachelor party, and uh, it was a fucking... New Orleans is a dump. It's a literal dump. Uh, <laughs> Have it's you ever just been like, there? Uh, no. It, it, well, it, you, it, the streets literally smell like shit. Um, <laughs> and, uh, but I just love it. I have this love for New Orleans. Um, that wasn't your first time going there. It was my third. No, I went for my brother-in-law's bachelor party. I went for my 21st birthday, and then I went uh, this time. It's and, funny uh, that you like intro it the way that you intro it, and then you like keep going back, though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I do. Well, like, it's <laughs> a complete dump. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. smells like shit. I can't get enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it took a lot. Of us. <laughs> um, and uh, no, it was a, a great time. You know, those experiences I had, I had a little bit of a social anxiety going into it because I didn't drink for three months and now I'm the bat, you know, the bachelor of the bachelor party. And, uh, and it was really kind of scary to me. I didn't know how I was going to handle it, react to it and, and all this stuff. Or if I drank, was I not going to get drunk or was I going to drink too much? All that shit. And, and it really went as perfect as planned uh, to, yeah. the, to the guys that helped plan that and do that with me. Um, Pete, has been dealing with some health stuff, so he stayed home. Yeah. Um, but I know he wish he would, he could have been there, and it was a blast. Um, so, go to New Orleans. Uh, you'll be weirdly surprised about how much you love it. <laughs> 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 so to Danny, um, Danny, I'm so interested to kind of hear the full scope of your story. Um, right now, you are a comedian. Yeah. Um, and uh, you've been doing that for some time. Uh -huh. um, you are from South Florida. I'm not. You're not. I'm not. That was a trick question. Where are you from? <laughs> <laughs> nice. Great save. Yeah. Uh, I'm from Indiana. I grew up, I, I was born in Chicago, but I grew up in Indiana. Okay. Yeah. You kind of look like a, like a, this is a combo, like an Indiana guy. Okay. Yeah, I'll take it. Yeah. Like Tom Petty? Like, like Tom Petty vibes? Like, like, yeah, like a Midwest. Yeah. yeah. Like Tom Petty is. <laughs> um, Last Dance with Mary Jane? Yeah, no. Yeah, we're <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's a great movie. <laughs> That's a great movie. Oh boy. Oh boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, he's a singer, Tom Petty? Oh. Yeah. Oh, did you know that? I feel like you did. He know died that. recently? Uh, you, you know. Yeah, RIP. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I like it. Um, I like this vibe. So, Danny, along with being a comedian, you are a uh, uh, paintball player professionally. That's, uh, well, D2. Well, we'll say professional. Well, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, Pete, Pete knows yeah, well yeah, enough to yeah, know that. Yeah, there's a little bit of a difference, but. It's yeah. semi-semi-pro. Yeah. Yeah, okay. If someone's in, like, it's like single you know, like, A MLB, they're going to say, I'm in the league, you know? Mm. Well, but you'd probably get called out. Right. But well, anyone in the MLB would be like, well, no, he's not. Well, if I'm, like, you at a bar and a girl comes up to me and she's like, what do you do? I'm saying professional paintball player. Yeah, that always gets their panties wet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you, the times that I've gotten laid off being a semi-semi-pro professional paintball player. <laughs> See how fast these fingers go. Yeah. <laughs> these aren't just for the trigger, babe. <laughs> oh, oh, boy. <laughs> Okay, and that's a passion, a hobby. What is that like for you? Oh, that's, uh, well, I would say it's a passion. It's not It's not just a hobby because there's a lot of work. It's, um, you know, as Pete knows, it's it's a lot of the things that I like in life don't, just don't pay a lot, yeah. you know? <laughs> like, <laughs> you know? So it's like I'm really good at, th <laughs> I'm really good at things that, yeah. like, you can't make a lot of money off yeah, of yeah, yeah. unless maybe you get really lucky. Yeah. Like, at least with the comedy, it's like, you, there's people. There's, you yeah, know, yeah. there's people like Bill Burr, Dave Chappelle. Yeah. Like, they have made a living, Louis C.K., you know? But, like, paintball, the, the, the top of the cream to the cream delay is, like, maybe, what, 100K a yeah, year? Yeah. And then until your body, you know... Yeah breaks down and that's like so, a relatively new thing too for right. a long time paintball was like almost unpaid yeah. right entire. right and at this point in my life it's weird because like i'm 29 
I've been playing again competitively for like five years and it's like this thing with myself where I'm like, I don't really know if I'll go pro. Like, I don't know if that's even something I really care about anymore sure. just because I have the comedy thing and I feel like that's like, that's like my vocation and my profession, mm-hmm. you know? So it's like paintball is just like something that I'm, I'm very passionate about and I love like being able to compete, yeah. you know, just because that pushes you and uh, the friends and the traveling and just playing the game itself. Like I love the game, yeah. you know? But as far as like making it pro, I don't really, I don't really have any, it, it doesn't draw me like that anymore, you know? I that's just, not your why. Yeah, or, yeah. Know? Like my thing is just to play at the most competitive level I can and, and hopefully do, do well, yeah. you know, yeah, and uh, awesome. enjoy myself, you know? As long as I can afford it. It's a fun sport, man. Yeah. Um, All right, so, you know, you are a comedian, and and we're definitely going to keep a lot of this episode light, but I do want to get into one part of your past, which Mm -hmm. was, you know, dealing with mental health and Mm -hmm. uh, and addiction. Right. Um, Now, I'm assuming, was the mental health before the addiction? I would say so, yeah. Okay. Yeah. When we talk mental health, what are we talking about specifically? Um, I would say... uh, I struggled with OCD a lot and, uh, you know, being raised religious, like, uh, I developed like this weird thing. Like we were talking about earlier with the, the erections thing, you know, like, uh, my mom told me that having erections was a sin. And so, uh, I started like, like if, if I lusted, like I would feel bad about it. So then I would like have to pray to ask for forgiveness. Mm -hmm. But then like I developed this like hyper anxious kind of mentality about life and like uh, sinning and mm-hmm. like being worried that I was sinning. So I would always have like these prayers, but then it became like compulsive, you know, mm-hmm. it would be like, um, you know, like sinning would give me so much anxiety. So then I would pray to ask for forgiveness because you're constantly sinning, you know, yeah. if you prescribe to that, you know, that Especially notion. if you're auditing your thoughts, not right. just your actions. Exactly. Your thoughts is tough. That's what's so crazy about it all because like in, in the Bible, it says like, you know, Jesus says something basically along the lines of like, well, if you think it, it's just as bad as if you did it. Mm. So then I'm like, well, fuck. And so then, yeah, yeah, you know, because then you're like, okay, well, what if I, you know, what if I think about killing someone? That's just as bad as me killing someone. So like started having like intrusive thoughts. That's a big part of OCD because like you're constantly worried. You're like, well, for me, it's like, okay, if thinking it is just as bad, well, what if, what if I accidentally think about hurting a baby? You know, I don't want to hurt a baby, but what if I accidentally have that thought? So now I'm thinking about not thinking about hurting a baby just to make sure that I'm not thinking about hurting a baby, if that makes sense. And then that's just going on and on in your head. And, um, so just like tons of, of anxiety with that, all sorts of weird things. Like I was worried that I would be possessed by the devil. Like I would accidentally ask to be possessed by the devil and then that would happen. So I would be like, I would be like, and then I would say it in my head, but then as you're saying the things, like for instance, I might say, you know, Satan, no enter, you know? And then as I'm saying that, I'm afraid that I might've accidentally said it wrong and then I said that I wanted Satan to enter me. Wow. And then, so then I would start talking out loud to myself. And then I was like in school, like freshman year. And so then I would like cover my mouth like this and I'd be like mumbling to myself. Super shameful, super, super like, oh God. Cause it's already, it already sucks to be a freshman. Sure. You know, it already sucks <laughs> to be in high school. You're already so self-conscious. And then you have like this shit that's going on and you don't know how to talk to yeah. anyone about it. Cause you think you're just like an insane person, you know? Mm. So I struggle with that. And I would say I, I definitely struggled with, like, depression throughout my life. Um, you know, just being very, like, existential and, like, thinking about, like, the nature of life and everything. Like, I always was kind of just, like, a deep person. So I felt things very deeply. And, uh, like, I would just, like, reason my way into, like, well, it doesn't, it doesn't matter, you know. And uh, found myself in, like, different rabbit holes. So, um, so, yeah. So I feel like those are two perfectly opposite in, in a hard way uh, type of mental issues because you either are with depression I don't give a fuck about anything in the world or with the OCD you literally give a fuck about everything right you know? right right so those are two polar opposites and I, if I were to guess you would probably were one or the other you know? right you know and it was either like I'm, I'm hypersensitive to everything or literally you could tell me my dog just died I'm gonna be like all right whatever sick um, right <laughs> so uh, that it, it it makes total sense to me, and it, and it was probably an internal battle most of your entire fucking life. If right. Not still. Right. Um, on a little bit of a dark humor note, imagine being in ninth grade and having the guy next to you put his shirt over <laughs> <laughs> and say "Devil No Entry." <laughs> I'm getting I, in this day. Yeah. Right. 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 <laughs> yeah, that's school, that's school shooter vibes. That's school shooter vibes for yeah. sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. You know? like, no penis, no. And you're like, <laughs> you know? Luckily, I was probably because I'm not fucking. Rebecca, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Luckily, I'd rather kill myself than anyone else. So you know, that's the thing. A school shooter, I'd just be. Uh, I shot myself. It's cool. You know. <laughs> I have no desire to, to kill anyone else. Yeah, you know, yeah. just just want to go on record and state that. You know, I don't know whether to laugh right now, but it's kind of funny. That's how a lot of people feel. You know, sometimes. Humor, See, I'm a dark humor guy, though. Right, you know? right. And, and I think the and, and it's a question I'm going to get to. And we could get to it now. You know, with comedy, it's such a hard thing these days because mm-hmm. with this, in my opinion, sensitive ass society, it's like you can't say nothing. Mm. Uh, the, the, really, the intention of a joke is to make fun of something, dude. You right, know? right. So, yeah. and and then all these these sensitive groups, in my opinion, someone's always getting their feelings hurt. You right. can be talking about an Asian, a trans, uh, a, a white guy, a white girl, Jew. anything, a Jew. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Back to the shirt in the glass. <laughs> I, don't, I don't hate Jews. I do not hate Jews. I do not hate Jews. <laughs> shalom, 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 shalom. Luck, luckily, my anti-Semitism was later in life. Uh, <laughs> <no>. <laughs> the, 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 oh my god! Oh man! <laughs> But, um, no, it, it's getting really hard, in my opinion, to be a comic uh, because, um, like I said, there's there's people in every... Cancel culture's thriving. It, it yeah. is. And, but I do feel, in my opinion, over the past six months, it really has lost steam because they found out that if you cancel someone every fucking day, then it's going to kind of become... Hard. Right. It's... Mm. And I find that the people who get, quote unquote, canceled and they kind of just are like, hey, it's who the fuck I am. Um, right. It, it, it dies in at least yeah, 24 sure. hours, you know? Mm-hmm. Like with this Will Smith shit... Um, smacking a comedian and Chris Rock, uh, it was like, I feel like Will Smith has been like a shady dude. His, her, his wife is fucking other dudes like openly. Like, it's just like a weird situation. So like he's unauthentic to some point. Obviously he's at some point because he went on fucking national TV and slapped a dude. So right, right. Um, I feel like for the people who are truly authentic in themselves, you know, they're really uncancelable because if you are who you are and you already have that audience, they're gonna understand. Right. So, yeah. well, I guess that, that's a good point for people who already have, like, the following or the audience. They can hope that their following, like, stays. But do you, like, deal with that at all or, like, worry about being canceled at all as someone that's, like, actively trying to, like, build your following and audience? Yeah, I mean, I always, like, think about it and, and, and worry about it just because, like, there's certain places that I work with, too, like, like clubs that are, like... Um, a little bit more sensitive and like, you know, like there's a club that I work with that's like an LGBTQ safe space. So it's like, I mean, obviously there's no hate in my heart, but at the same time, like I say, I say a lot of things with the intention of making people laugh, you know what I mean? And sometimes I don't, you know, sometimes I go crazy. Like sometimes I go off, you know, whatever. And, and even sometimes like, uh, like there's a joke that I've been doing recently and, um, you know, the punchline is anti-Semitic. Mm-hmm. But it's not. I don't mean that. It's just. Yeah, sure. It's just the rule of threes. It's just like, do do do. There's the there's the trap door. And then it's like, and it's like it's a good joke and it makes people laugh because it's so you it because yeah. because of the cancel culture because we're so pent up. It's so like oh my god he just said that like yeah, and yeah. and because of that it works so well. But I'm like worried to post it online even though on one level it could be really good mm-hmm. and on the other level it's like oh career is already over you know what i mean yeah where do you draw that line and 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 also it's like another thing too is like when you're making jokes nowadays too it's like you're like oh well people might like that for the wrong reason you know mm-hmm. like they might actually hate views you yeah, know yeah, what yeah. i mean and so then <laughs> now i'm like performing at like white white lives matter <laughs> rallies or something like yeah. i don't know now i'm like a, a clan member or something right. like all my audience comes with you know hoods on and shit like it's like a weird thing because like some people don't understand it's just satire you know like yeah, it's right. just mm-hmm. ironic so it's a it's a it's a weird line but what i have realized is like doing it live is so much different mm-hmm. because like I don't know. There's just like things are taken out of context when you look at it online. When you're when you're in the room with a comedian and you could feel the vibe, you could feel how they've been doing. Like you understand their voice and kind of like their point of view. So it's it's a lot easier to get away with things in person than like online. You know, yeah, sure. And you can um, sort of like read the room when you're right, in a room right, full of people. When right. you put it online, it's like right. you're blasting it to everyone. Yeah. And I just don't know. So my question to you would be: If social media wasn't a thing and this was 30 years ago, would you say a shit ton more jokes? Um, probably not. I mean, just from my perspective, I feel like for the most part, I'm really only, 
I really am saying anything that I could think of that I think is funny. Mm-hmm. Like I don't really – I'm not – so like controversial that I'm like worried. Like I don't, yeah. I don't have like material about trans people. So it's not like it's not like I have like 15 minutes on trans people that I'm like afraid to say. I just <laughs> I don't have that material. I'm not thinking about that. It's not. I mean, I am thinking about it. I think we all are. But you know, <laughs> I mean, I wasn't, I, wasn't, I wasn't agreeing or disagreeing. <laughs> late night of the soul. You know, you're up at 2 a.m. Could I do it? I'm not sure. You know. Uh, how long are you usually going up for? On uh, I would say at this at this point, the average is like um, probably ten minutes, mm-hmm. depending on like if it's a show. I usually am given like ten or fifteen minutes at this point. Mm-hmm. If it's an open mic, open mics are five minutes. Mm-hmm. Um, but er, you know, every once in a while, you know, I'll get booked for like a feature or like I'll get to headline. I'll do you know like twenty minutes. The, the longest set I've ever done is fifty two minutes. Mm-hmm. I did that like not this Saturday, but the Saturday before. I you know. know. It was great. Yeah. It was at a rehab. So, Sick. you know, I booked the show, so I booked myself to headline. Because um, <laughs> that's, that's how you got to do that sometimes. Dude, uh, Danny, I love it. I mean, there's a lot of probably dark humor jokes you can use in rehab. Oh, yeah. yeah. Big time. Yeah, 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 Big yeah. time. Um, <laughs> fuck yeah, that. Um, <laughs> so the last thing I want to talk about on mental health is, right, you know, how did you get out of that space? Are you still fighting with that space? Drugs. Okay, that's a good leapfrog. Um, No, but I really think that uh, people will say this. People say, like, drugs saved my life. And uh, I really feel like that's kind of true on some level. Like, I don't regret doing drugs. You know what I mean? Like, Mm -hmm. I really do. Like, I remember the first time I smoked weed, I was like, I can't remember what I'm forgetting, you know? Because, like, the OCD, I would always try to remember everything. Mm -hmm. So, like, I, I just literally couldn't be OCD, like, the first time I got stoned. And so, like, drugs were, like, a great solution for a while. Yeah. Yeah. And then, of course, uh, they become a problem, yeah. you know. And then you can't sustain that. And then they, they become worse than the initial problem you're trying to solve, maybe. Um, but eventually, I had to learn how to live life without drugs just because, for me, it's just too problematic to try to use drugs. Because I tried to successfully find some sort of concoction that would work. You know, what was that um, like? What was that concoction? Well, like I would always like, like I would like substitute, like you know, like I would be like, uh, you know, like like speed was like my favorite thing, like five ants and Adderall and mm-hmm. shit like that. I mm-hmm. love doing that, and so that was like my thing for a long time. And then, um, and then I discovered Xanax, and uh, then I would do. Then I was like, okay. Then I did both, you mm-hmm. know, basically. And then like I was like such a garbage head where I would just like use anything you know and then um when i found heroin i was like oh this is like the solution to being a garbage head like rather than going up and down and sideways and all these different ways like let me just just do heroin and i literally thought like oh this is like the perfect drug you know Mm -hmm. what i mean and then that's its own nightmare Mm -hmm. and um you know so then i would try to just drink or like i would just always have these like like ideas like okay i'm gonna stop doing psychedelics and i'm just gonna do like a prescribed amount of Adderall every day and maybe Xanax at night. And then like, like whatever it is, I could just, I just thought like maybe I could find some perfect, you know, numbing concoction, agents. you know? Like yeah. You're trying to find, you're trying to perfect, find a perfect numbing agent. For, yeah. Like for, speed. So yeah. I could be motivated and want to do things, but then weed to be creative. Mm-hmm. So I was always trying to like, f- like I always look to drugs for some sort of solution or mm-hmm. some sort of aid, you know? Um, and what was that timeline of using drugs? Four or five years? How long was About that? four years. Yeah. And yeah. that was from like, what, 19 to 23 in that range? About 18 to almost 22. Okay. Um, yeah. And how quick did it go from, you know, the speed and, and Xanax to the heroin? Heroin, um, the, I would say the first time I did heroin was, it was, the, heroin was basically the last year. Okay. Um, the first time I did it was like a couple months prior, but then I didn't have a steady connect. Mm-hmm. Um but it was, I mean, it was pretty much problems from the rip. You know, I lived with my parents. They were strict. So then, like, I was always running into issues with them. And then in some ways that kind of pushed me to uh, to go harder, you know, just because I think some people have, like, parents that aren't strict. So you can kind of just get away with smoking weed mm-hmm. and hanging out. But my parents were, like, so strict. So it just, like, it only pushed me to go further. Like, oh, well, now pills don't smell, you know, or mm-hmm. whatever the case is, you know. Yeah. Um, and I just had an addictive personality, yeah. you know. Now, you know, after that age of twenty three, you know, did you go to a rehab? What What was like the, get, the getting out process like for you? Yeah, I, I went to rehab three times. Okay. Uh, the third time, I came down here to South Florida. Mm-hmm. My buddy was down here, and um, I kind of made this decision myself that I was going to like basically really give it a shot, like what they say in rehab and stuff like that, and really do the deal, if you will. And uh, if that doesn't work, I'm just going to kill myself. 
And um, I really, really gave it a shot, and I really surrendered to the whole process and, like, tried to be honest and, and really take all the suggestions and, and stop trying to – because, I, you know, I think I'm smart, so I think I always thought I could figure it out on my own, you know. So I had to really, like, swallow my pride and just be like, all right, like – and give away, like, certain conceptions. Like, I thought I was going to be a rock star. Mm. And, like, when I got sober this time, I was just like, I don't care. Like, if it's – if I just have to work some job, if I just have to be some guy who works out, like, plays volleyball, like, whatever it is, I'm giving out – I'm giving away all the conceptions of what I thought life needed to be for me to be happy, mm. and I'll just try their way, you know. And then I stuck with it, and, you know, things got better, you know, slowly but surely over the years. But initially, things got really better – um, inside, you know, like emotionally, I had like a, a spiritual experience, you know, being sober for only a few months. And that really made it so that I could, you know, continue to go on the path, you know. There's so many different snippets to what, what I love in a weird way. What I really like is, you know, it, it sounds really sad, but you made that decision of I'm either killing myself or I'm doing this. Right. So it was all in. Yeah. You know, and, yeah. and I had a similar personality. Uh, to you and the fact that, like I said before, I'm an all-in or not-in guy. Right, right. Um, and when you surrender in a good way to things, uh, we are incredibly powerful. Right. Um, and because and, and you're all in, And it's not just like a term. Like, all-in for you in a bad way is ripping heroin. Yeah. If you flip that on a good side, all of you in a good way is like million air comic, you mm-hmm, know? Mm-hmm. And uh, so kudos to you for that. Thanks, and man. And... and um, it shows guys that, you know, it doesn't have to be to that extreme nearly, but if you buy fully into what the fuck you're saying, life it like it is life and death, like you do need your disciplines and, and your habits, like you need to breathe, then you're gonna be successful. Um, and, and it's pretty much that simple. Now when you got out of rehab, um, what was the next few years like in becoming this kind of sense of a comic? Yeah, good uh, good question. So basically, like I said, I didn't have the same set of, like, I didn't have the same idea of who I was. So I was really, like, I was really just kind of, like, in the moment, you know? Like, for me, I think I had, like, kind of skipped past, you know, like, I didn't go to college. Like, I didn't go away to college. I went to community college, you know? I was always doing drugs. So, like, just being here in South Florida, I was, like, free of, like, my addictions. So I was just kind of enjoying myself. Like, I was working a job. I was just being, like, a normal, like, relatively, like, adult person, you know? Like, I started learning how to, like, go to the gym and, like, work out and, like, you know, buy groceries and just, like, hang out with people, you know, just have friends and, like, just be a normal person. But there was always, like, this itch being an artist, you know. Like, I had been a musician for years and that was my passion. There was always this itch of, like, oh, you should do something else. But, like, it wasn't clicking. Like, I would, like, I would look on Craigslist, like, I looked on Craigslist and I was like, oh, like, musicians wanted or whatever. And I, like, hung out with this girl and whatever, she wanted to bang me. But, uh, <laughs> as you know, as is the case with, with Craigslist, yeah. you know, like, <laughs> great yeah, things. Yeah, well, <laughs> No, it, exactly. it, it, literally, yeah, yeah, yeah. Her, it literally said recovery musicians wanted. And I like messaged her. <laughs> and I had to like borrow my roommate's car at the time and like and go up and see her. I wonder where she is. And uh, <laughs> you know, she was all the way to West Bulb, yeah. And uh, but anyhow, like I just kind of like was just going with the going through the flow, you know. I uh, I got into gambling around yeah. that point and then I realized that I had a gambling problem and I stopped. And uh, it wasn't like the other addictions where it didn't get that bad, but I realized I was like, I'm mimicking the same behavior, mm-hmm. spending all my money trying to go to the casino to win. I think I'm a good poker player. I'm yeah. not, you know? <laughs> and um, like, I'm, I'm too much a gambler, you know? Like, people are yeah. actually doing math and like yeah, they're, yeah, yeah. no, I, I like the rush. I'm a degenerate, you know? <laughs> and um, so I was just kind of like meandering, not meandering, but I was like, I think at the time, it, like, there were certain moments where I'd be like, man, what am I really doing? I'm just sober, but what am I really doing? But now that I've been sober, you know, longer and I've now that I am a comic, I can look back in those times and realize that like all the time that I thought was wasted wasn't. It was all building towards something. Like I was getting consistent with the gym. It's so, like once cuz for me like once I start something, I don't stop. Like mm-hmm. as soon as I got into the gym, I never stopped working out. Like I've never been like, "Oh, I took 6 months off." Like it's never so I I started working out. Like I started learning all these habits so that when it got to the point where I finally like, you know, like I'd be um you know, I'd be hanging out with people in recovery and I'd be telling them stories and like, you should try stand up. You should try stand up. That was another thing that happened. So then eventually when it got to the point where I tried stand up, I was already stable in all these other areas. So I didn't have, I wasn't trying to get my shit together. You know what I mean? So now I can look back and be like, I'm grateful for that time where it was like, you know, it was like a slow build. I didn't start doing stand up till I had like four and a half years uh, sober, you know? 
And I probably started playing paintball when I had like three. But all those things just slowly built, you know. I think it could be discouraging for people um, when they don't realize that that's how long it takes when you're not cheating, you know, and you're not doing shortcuts. Like sometimes it takes as long as it takes. Some people you can look around and you man, they're so, they're, they're sexy already. Like getting sober, like people would be like, have a six pack. And I'm like, I put on 60 pounds. I was like fucking yeah. 190. And I'm just like, what, what's going on? You know, like, yeah. or they're, they're getting, you know, they're having sex and I'm not, you know, like, but all those things, like you can turn out, like not getting laid, that gave me a great sense of humor. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that, you know, when you embrace that like loserdom and stuff and turn it into like an asset. So I don't know, it took a while, but it was like, now I can look back and be grateful for the, for the process. You know, it's interesting. I think there's this conception that, you know, people get lucky or whatever, you know. And, and in my opinion, really, I mean, it's your definition of luck, but there's a lot of work that goes into something. Kim K fucking Ray J, you know, and then becoming Kim K, you know. I mean, that's a, kind of a big cost to pay to, to become that. And if you're willing to pay that at the time, obviously it paid off. But what I'm saying is a lot of these people who you think get big overnight or just popped or came out of nowhere, you right. know. They put in a lot of fucking work for that one pop. Right. You know, they put in a lot of fucking effort for that one viral video or mm -hmm. that one thing to happen um, that you don't see. All you see is the pop and you're like, they got lucky. Right. You know, and it's such bullshit because then when you start your journey and it's really hard and it takes you six months and you've been a comic and you're like, dude, I'm not Kevin Hart yet. Bro, right. Kevin Hart was in Philadelphia doing stand up at local bars for like 10 years. Bro. Right. And that's also another thing. A lot of the people that are winning just didn't fucking quit. Yeah. yeah. You know, there probably are a few Kevin Hart's in the world who are 45 years old and still working in Philadelphia bars. A kicker to that is they're probably way happier than you fucking are, and they might be broke, but at least they're fucking living their truth, you know? Right, right. And uh, a lot of people are dying inside because they're not even living their truth. They're trying to live for, you know, money or, you know, these fantasies of what life should be. So, yeah. Um, so realize a lot of fucking work goes into stuff, and, and don't fucking quit because you think your timeline is different from others. Um, so... With comedy and starting that, I, some comedy questions, I guess, that would come to my mind in being a comic is, like, what was that first experience, like, when you walked on stage and you were like, oh, shit, you know, I got to tell a joke. Oh, man. I mean, so the first time I was so nervous yeah. beforehand, like, that day I felt like I was, like, on Adderall. Like, I couldn't yeah. eat. Mm -hmm. uh, like, I went to Chipotle at lunch. Uh, I was working a job. And, um, you know, I just couldn't eat. And, like, the whole day I was so nervous. I had to pee, like, 17 times <laughs> before I got on stage. But once I was on stage, uh, you know, I brought a bunch of friends the first time, and I did, I did well. Like now, obviously, looking back, I'd probably be like, eh. But at the time, it it literally felt like I crushed. Yeah. Like it felt like I destroyed. I didn't know what the light was. Like I didn't know when you were supposed to wrap up. You're supposed, you're only supposed to do five minutes. I think I did like twelve minutes the first uh, time. Yeah, yeah. Like I told a story. Like my boys were just you know hooting and whoring, you know. And I was like, I just felt it. Literally was like such a rush. Yeah. Like it was like it was like doing heroin. Like it was like, and I immediately knew I was like, this is what I'm supposed to do, yeah. and. This I'm good at this, and this is I'm this is here. Like yeah. it clicked, you know what I mean? Like this is the path for sure, you know. And even before I got into stand up, I wasn't like, oh, I'm just gonna try stand up. I kind of already knew at that point. Mm -hmm. I had premeditated. I was like, once I do it, I'm gonna become a comedian because like I just knew already that it was like something people have been saying for years. I was like, once I do it, I'm gonna, mm -hmm. you know, hit the ground running. You know, all in. You know what's so cool? I love hearing that. And, and ultimately, my entire life, whenever I would say, like, yeah, I found that. Before the podcast, I had really never found that. Where right. It was kind of a merge of, ev like, all these emotions of excitement, fear, hunger, uh, you know, a world that you didn't know. I mean, right. before Pete and I jumped on camera, I had never, like, been in front of a camera at all. I posted right. on social media, like, once every two months. Like, I wasn't that guy. And uh, we did our first episode, I remember, <laughs> me being my dumb ass. I'm like, dude, well, we're going to be Joe Rogan in six months. You know? <laughs> yeah. And uh, But I remember that emotion that you were just describing of like, this is this is heroin. You yeah, know? Like, yeah. This is really cool. And and I think it means about just as much to you um, of what I'm saying, you yeah. know, of, of how much it is. And, and, and then it, there's a thought that creeps in your head of like, well, it's like the margin to get to the top is so small. Mm. But then I'm like, yep. is Joe Rogan fucking Superman? No, he's not. Right. You know, so why the fuck can't I become Joe Rogan? And someone say, well, you're not going to be the next Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan was 27 at one point in his fucking life, you know? True. And before Fear Factor and all this other shit, he was just 
being Joe Rogan. Right, know? right. So um, why can't you be the next Kevin Hart or Dave Chappelle or, you know, any of these guys, right. you know? Um, because you're going to tell yourself you can't be and you're going to you're going to defeat yourself before the world does. So stick I, with it, man. That's Yeah. I think it's an interesting thing like what you're talking about because like for me it's like I think at some point I guess what I'm saying is to to pursue like things like a podcast or to mm -hmm. be a comedian, you have to be a little bit delusional. Oh, like awesome. you have to like have this idea cuz I think you have probably experienced the same thing where you have this feeling where you're like, "Oh, I am a rock star." Mm -hmm. "Oh, I am special." Like you feel it and you're like, "Oh, I'm this is, I'm different, you know, like I'm a cut above. This is, you feel that feeling and it's like, it's all chemical. Like your brain gives you these endorphins and you're like, oh, I'm the shit, like I'm the man. And then you're like, you'll come back to earth, like maybe you have a bad, you know, set or whatever. And then also you'll look at, on social media and you'll see all these other people trying to do it. And you're like, oh, well, maybe they feel the same exact way. Like we all can't be right, right? So like there's all these like mind games on the way. But I think as long as you just like love what you're doing, and also something that I've realized recently is like there's also so many people that are not doing it right. and there's also so many people that need to be entertained, that need to have something to watch, that need to, to go out on Saturday night with their girlfriend that they can't stand anymore and forget about it at a comedy show. Like there's unlimited amounts of people that are ready to consume yeah. whatever you bring to them of value. You know what I mean? So Like everyone in today's day and age yeah. you're right. on your phone, you know, and yeah. like they're consuming <laughs> yeah. someone's fucking yeah. content, right. you know. Um, <laughs> It's so true, man. All right, so... What's your schedule like now as far as comedy? Like, are you doing open mics how many nights a week? Yeah, I um, I try to do... Like, I, I'm usually booked for some shows. At least, I would say on average, two, two to three days of the week are shows mm -hmm. and then open mics. Usually, I'll take off maybe, like, one night, like Sunday, because there's not really an open mic that night around here, mm -hmm. um, or, or Monday sometimes. But usually, I, I get up five times a week. And then some of those are double headers, you know. That's right. Yeah. So earlier I mentioned I'm gonna uh, bring it back to uh, Christmas break of senior year of high school. <laughs> what happened then, Danny? Walk me through that. <laughs> Walk me through that. Okay. Um, Christmas break, senior year. I, I want intricate details. Intricate details. Yeah. Okay. Let's do it. Um, all right. So like like I said, Ray's very Christian. Mm -hmm. You know, starting to have a starting to have like a crisis of faith. Trying to you know, kind of like existentially I was like Christianity like it just doesn't make sense to me like certain things like I would think about where I'm just like you know like this is a book written like in history like like w w like like all these different thoughts yeah. you know what I mean like I'm like well, did anyone fact check it type thing like you know or was it yeah like it, like that type shit but also like it, it just like I don't I guess I can't really remember all yeah. the ways that I was doubting back then or what my thought process was but I was just starting to see through the curtain, mm -hmm. you know, and I was starting to, to question it and tear down the fibers. And like, you know, I have a doubting mind, so I was just finding every single way. And then I'd find an answer to myself, but then I would find a doubt for that. And truthfully, at that point, I was just like, I want to doubt this. Like, I want, mm -hmm. deep down, I want to break free of religion and be a heathen. Like, I want to do drugs. I want to touch myself. You know, <laughs> like, I want to, you know. Niggas do. Yeah. <laughs> so, um I think I think I masturbated for the first yeah I did okay I masturbated for the first time before I smoked weed for the first time but it was the same Christmas break so I uh, so I it was an event for Christmas break. <laughs> it was dude it was crazy yeah, yeah. what uh, <laughs> you really are a go getter <laughs> grandma I need you to go get me a bag of mango and a thing of lotion because tonight's gonna be crazy because I remember the first time I smoked weed um, the same Christmas break I was discovering both things at the same time and I was like. I felt so much, like, I felt shame, like, oh, man, like, I, I, mean, I, I got to go back to Christianity. Mm -hmm. Like, I felt like I was in that movie, It's a Wonderful Life. Mm -hmm. And I remember thinking to myself, well, since I'm going to have to get back on the right track tomorrow, I might as well jerk off one last time while I'm on weed, you know, <laughs> not realizing how much well, of a staple. Well, I a dollar <laughs> for every time I said that. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I guess um, I basically was just like, I got to try this. Like, I got to see what. Like so you want to know about the first masturbation? Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, what, what was that experience? I mean, what got it triggered? What, what um, was it? I basically, like, just like the weed, I was like, I need, I just want to try this. Like, I need mm -hmm. to figure out what it is. And um, I just kind of made that decision. I was like, I'm going to do it. And I'd never done it before. I didn't know. Yeah. So yeah. I remember I had, like, an old school phone, mm -hmm. and I looked up NFL cheerleaders. <laughs> nice. And, uh, like, and you was a senior? <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> I don't know why. I just, like, thought of, like, the things – 
through the years, I guess, that like yeah. I had shut, you know, I'd shoved down. Because, you know, it's not like I'm just an 18 year old. It's like, it's like I stunted my sexuality yeah. at like 10 or 11. So now yeah. I should be further on, yeah. but I'm not, you know? Yeah. So, and it was like, you, you know, you had to load, like not like smartphones, yeah. remember? Like when you tried to use Google on like an old school flip phone. And, um, yeah, I just found one. I didn't even know what I was doing. I think I, like, rubbed it on, like, a Tootsie Roll pillow. <laughs> I had, like, a Tootsie Roll pillow like this, and I just, like... Never had that ever. <laughs> I, ru- I rubbed it. I Like, I didn't even... I was I was literally scared to, like, grip it. I was like, that's that feels too weird, you know? <laughs> yeah. So I kind of just, like, figured it out, you know? Yeah, yeah. And uh, and then I and I came, mm. and then I felt so much shame. Like, I felt so oh, really? bad. Yeah, I felt... It's called, it's called posting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I felt so <laughs> much shame. <laughs> So it wasn't like every, you weren't like addicted to busted nuts after that. Oh, I mean, I was, <laughs> okay. but like, cause literally, I think the next day was Christmas Eve, and I went downstairs on the computer and I looked up NFL cheerleaders again. <laughs> <laughs> Christ. And I still remember there was this no, late. I'm not. I'm going to end up with this guy. He's going to take 10 bath breaks. Dude. You if... see Dan show up with the binoculars on. And sweatpants. If there's any NFL cheerleaders out there, you know, that would. Bottle Danny Fatman. Uh, I love you guys. It was like, I remember there was this lady in a, in a chair, like an NFL cheerleader. It was like a Maxim yeah. shoot. And uh, she was in like a see-through chair and she had like high heels. And uh, I remember being on the computer and I literally like felt like out of my body. Like yeah, I yeah. felt like I was spinning. You ever have that? Like you ever get in a, like an erection so strong, like you literally start like floating above your body. Like it felt like, have you ever been on Adderall and you try to focus really hard and you leave your body? It's the exact same feeling. And I was like, yo, this is crazy. So the next day I was back at it. You know what yeah, I mean? And um, so yeah, then I, I pretty much... I just, you know, once I, st- and then I smoked weed and then I jerked off that time. And then, <laughs> and then it was just like, then it became a thing, you yeah. know, then I, and that was, I was able to like, just slowly kind of step out of Christianity <laughs> and step into marijuana and masturbation, you know? Listen, <laughs> it really makes sense. Honestly, like, yeah. If I could feel the euphoria of beating off and smoking for the first time. Right. Fuck heroin, dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that shit all day. Well, you chase that high, you know. Yeah, yeah. You chase that high of like what you know, because then you take Vivan. You ever take Vivans or Adderall, you know? And then I would get super horny on that shit. I remember being in high school and like I, I would go to the bathroom and just like fucking be on speed, like mm-hmm. trying to get my dick hard and just masturbate. <laughs> you, you can beat off for like forty five minutes yeah. on that shit, yeah. and forty four of it is just yeah. trying to get hard. Yeah. <laughs> Full sweat. No, I've been there, dude. Yeah. You know? It's like you're blowing the sweat off your top. Man. You know? It's funny you say you're looking up NFL cheerleader. I was thinking, I think I had a full-on browser's account my senior year. Wow. Year. Yeah, I was paying for that premium. We were passing around the username and password <laughs> between like 10 dudes. Wow. Yeah, we were flipping that shit. Um, I really... We were Discord before that was a thing. Yeah. I never really got into porn um, really until... Until I got sober, yeah. like I watched it on crystal meth, but that was more like a group activity, mm-hmm. you know. Because yeah. uh, when you <laughs> when you when you smoke meth, like people just want to put on porn, yeah. you know. Like that's a thing. Yeah, it's a thing. It's just like like it was crazy. Like in retrospect, I thought about it because like, I was doing meth in Garden Grove, California, and I was literally doing garden. I was doing meth with this kid named Little Tony, and Little Tony's little man, and they were like fourteen and twelve, what? and they would just get and high you, on meth. You were an adult. Yeah, I was nineteen. So you were with two underage kids. Yeah, I thought about that recently. Like, oh boy, yeah. that was fucked up. Yeah. And I mean, watching not, porn. I not like I was like you know I wasn't into them or anything, yeah. but you know <laughs> they would put on porn, and I'd be like, because I'm high on meth. I'm like, okay, I kind of get it. This does like enhance your high. But then I would go in the other room and play guitar. Yeah. <laughs> you were smoking like, meth with a twelve year old. Yes, dude. Like, what? Yes. <laughs> it was so wild. It's like sixth grade. <laughs> I know. That's how, that's why I ended up smoking meth. Like I met them on the street, yeah. and they came up to me and they're like, "Hey, do you have a cigarette?" And I was like, "No." Uh, and then they walked past. But I was like, I was doing like the "Hey, Mister" thing at yeah. the Seven Eleven for booze. Yeah. And I was like, eh, th- "These kids are young. They're asking for a cigarette." I'm like, "Hey, come back here. Can you get? You guys want? Can you guys get drugs?" And they're like, "What are you a cop?" I was like, "Do I look like a cop?" <laughs> and they're like, "No." And then. Um, so, you know, they, I'm like, you know, I want molly or acid. And they call around and like, ah, we can't get anything. But we're trying to get high, too. And I'm like, well, what are you trying to get high on? And they're like, meth. 
And I literally look at them and I'm like, are you a cop? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, well, they look healthy enough, so yeah, let's do it, yeah. you know? And that was literally my rationale. Yeah. Like I'd heard about meth. I'd read about meth. They looked healthy enough. I was like, let's try it, you know? And then next thing you know, once you do meth, you're, yeah, yeah. you're on a meth bender. No, it's you know? especially with a 12-year-old, you know? Yeah. Fucking... You know how it is when you're smoking meth yeah. with 12-year-olds, you know? <laughs> it's crazy to think, like, what you were probably doing at 12 years old. And this yes. Thing, this kid was yes, doing at 12 years exactly. Old. Well, that was the thing. Meth makes you so euphoric. Mm-hmm. And I'm such a... I'm just, like, not, like, for being around, like, a lot of people on drugs, I was very different, you know? Because, like, I, I waited till I was 18. I had, yeah. like, you know, read books and shit. So I was, like, kind of, like, verbose for being a person on meth, you know? So like Only a verbose person would say a word like that. <laughs> right. So I don't like, even know what that means, but I can assume. <laughs> so, like, we're, we're smoking meth. Context clues and shit. <laughs> I'm not even going to use that right now. We're talking about smoking meth. What, what does that sit in that mean? Bones. Boned up? You read the whole dictionary or something on meth? No. We were, we were on meth and like they were like, hey, do you mind if I like uh, bring my girl over here and have sex? And I was like, listen, I had such a repressive childhood. You know, I grew up in a very repressed household. I want you to have the childhood I never had. Yeah. So, you know, my mom, she told me that having erections was a sin. <laughs> so I want you to if, express your sexuality. Enjoy yourself. You know, enjoy the love of your youth. You know, like I'm high on meth like saying this to a 12 fucking year old from me, fucking from me. <laughs> <laughs> meanwhile meanwhile <laughs> meanwhile this was all a front for them to just rob all my shit because i left yeah. to let them to let them you know to let him bang his girl and i left i'm like you guys you know i thought they were my friends because i was yeah. high on meth and then they came back and all my shit was stolen you know fuck badass 12 year old i met my life <laughs> and someone busted a nut right on your bed and all your shit's gone yeah that's that's the biggest fuck you in the world. That sucks. Dude. Oh yeah. Well, After you had that heart to heart too. Um, oh, up. so much heart to heart. Last thing I'm being bricked up. You, I seen one of your uh, Instagram <laughs> reels. And you were talking about a little bit ED. Yeah. Okay. That's a is that a thing or is that like a a bit or no? Um, it's a. Yeah. Uh, it's definitely a thing. It's you yeah. know it's hard to deal with. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, <Bit> but uh, <laughs> no, um, it's well, it's actually yeah. Um, <laughs> That's poor choice of words. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, ED is a real thing. I think I, I started struggling with that once I got sober. Mm. Like, I don't know. It's just like um, I just started like, oh, man, I couldn't get hard, like yeah. having sex sober. Like, or, it's like, not I remember, the same without meth. Yeah, yeah, you know. I, I Obviously, I had it on drugs, but you're just yeah. like, oh, drugs, you know. Yeah. Um, but then, like, it's just been like this thing. I don't know if it's mental or or what it is exactly. You know, one of, that's how I got involved with the NoFap thing was my buddy told me that, you know, if you're having trouble staying hard for sex, it's because you're addicted to porn. Mm-hmm. And then that's why you, you're not as excited by real life. And then you have porn-induced erectile dysfunction, mm-hmm. pied, which is, you know, not the type of sexual pie I'm looking for. <laughs> <you know. laughs> Can't disagree with that one. Um, you know, Danny, no, There's probably some validity to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Queen pie. Well, yeah, no, like, I didn't mean that part. I meant the point that he was making. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Still the pies. <laughs> um, well, dude, that's so little. Well, we're gonna bleep that out. <laughs> um, I don't know if that came out the way you yeah, meant for it no, to. Um, People yeah. see you if they want to go watch you perform. Um, well, let's see. Friday night, I will be at the Doghouse Theater in Delray Beach, Florida. Cool. Okay. And then Saturday night, I will be at the Villain Theater in Miami, Florida, at 10 p.m. Okay. And um, other than that, check me out on Instagram, Danny Fallon, haha. And I'll post my other shows on there usually, or Facebook if you're old school, Danny Fallon, yeah. you know. Um, yeah, and we'll then put everything yeah, in the description. Yeah, so like pr- pretty much, I put all my fl- my shows on there. But as far as this week, also I'm telling a true story tomorrow in Miami. There's like this true story show where you mm-hmm. just tell you have to tell a 100 percent authentic true story. Mm-hmm. So I'm doing that tomorrow in Miami. Yeah. So that's this week. Really yeah, yeah, that's you guys, like yeah, you guys, you guys should, you definitely do it. You don't have to be like a comic or anything. Yeah. So it's it's cool, you know, public speaking mm-hmm. and yeah. How many people are you going to be in front of for something like that? For tomorrow, I guess it just depends what they get, like in promotion, you yeah. know. Yeah, yeah. I, I love it, Danny. Say, what's the most yeah. you've ever been in front of? Um, I would say maybe like two hundred. Nice. Yeah. Damn, dude. Yeah. Sick. That's badass, man. Yeah. I don't know if I could do it. See that? Feel How like many people are going to be at your wedding? Uh, I just read the shit that I have to read for your wedding. It's yeah. like a lot. No, it's not. Do I have to memorize all that? It's a lot of stuff. No, memorize it. You read off a fucking iPad. Okay. But you have I'm to not that good at reading crowd. either. That's so much more pressure. Yeah, you should yeah. probably memorize not it. Stutter. <laughs> no pressure. How many people are going to be there? Just don't fuck up my wedding. <laughs> 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 um, no, about buck fifty. God's sake. Yeah, um, I better start practicing. Uh, no, no, no pressure. Uh, 
All right, Danny, thank you so much uh, course, for coming man. on. And um, I really want to go see you. Yeah, we got to go see you. Yeah, uh, come through. Um, I'm going to get really stoned and just go watch and laugh yeah. and, and, uh, and, and, and promote you. And, yeah. And, and I love to see that. Thanks, man. Uh, follow your passion, guys. Follow your fucking dreams. Um, because if anything, I can tell you, you're going to be fulfilled and talk about that feeling of that high. Mm. Uh, yeah, reach for that shit um, because it's fire. Thank you guys for watching, listening, viewing, and subscribing. Continue to tell your friends and family about that, guys. It means the world to us. Check us out on the MSCS project, uh, uh, MSCS Media Podcast this week. And check out Danny and all of his stuff. Um, thank you guys for watching. We'll see you guys next week. Peace. Peace. But I've been nice like getting money, I'm on my suck again Trying to stack a little dub, trying to catch a win And next time I drop a coupe, it's gonna be a twin turbo Always been a G, but I ain't never been a herd though Way I'm switching lanes, this shit call a nigga Swervo